right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's a history behind this. And if we could see the full YouTube clip, it would become clear that, that the issues of, of the historical relationship between black folk and land and the allocation of resources and distribution based upon the U.S. government has really weighed heavily on her and her interaction with this, with this farmer. Now, she also said that the farmer was, was, acting, was talking to her as if he was superior to her. So, so there, was, there was some precedent for or some, some issue that, that, that uh, uh, produced her response to him in this situation. But I would look at the history here, too. There's a huge irony in, in this, that here we have this example of institutional racism, a black woman denying a white farmer uh, whatever her full, the full complement of her resources in terms of assisting him with his issue. But if we look back to, the, to slavery, to yeah. 40 acres and a mule, to, to the, G, the GI Bill, to, to mortgage lending practices, we've often seen a lot of institutional racism working against black folk. And so it weighed heavy on her heart that she had this choice to make. And I think she thought a little bit too much probably about that history, and that probably shaped her decision. And I think that's why we got this particular outcome. To, 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 to your point <clears throat> of, of the way that the farmer was behaving toward her, we do have a little clip of, of what she said about that. Let's sure. play what she said, then I'll ask you. Okay. Uh, what he didn't know, while he was taking all that time trying to show me he was superior to me, was I was trying to decide just how much help I was going to give him. The, the, the fact that somebody might be ob obnoxious or ignorant or hostile to you, is it still incumbent upon you to do everything you can to help them? And, and can you lay off this idea of, well, I didn't help him because he was white, because he was obnoxious to me? Well, first of all, particularly when you're in a, a governmental position, you have to be fair and balanced and you have to be objective. But again, the history here is so heavy, right? The history is so weighted with, with the ways in which particularly land uh, has been denied and or mm -hmm. allocated along racial lines that I think that just weighed heavily on her heart. And what she's saying in this anecdote is that him acting superior to her or however he disrespected her brought on the rush of all those feelings in that particular right. history and that shaped her decision here. It's unfortunate uh, but, but we can't ignore the historical sort of precedence that made her think and feel the way she felt in that particular moment. But, but, but how history weighs on her heart does not excuse what she did, correct? It does not. I mean, it's, listen, this is a textbook case of institutional racism. It's just that normally institutional racism is not black against white. I mean, historically, it's been white against black or white against whatever pe person of color is, is, is in question. But this is still institutional racism. Yeah. We can't endorse it. It, it. It's hard to get the entire context of this because we, we don't it have is. the full clip. At one point, she talks about taking this white farmer to a white lawyer saying, I took him to one of his, quote, kind which yes. certainly is charged language. But then she goes on to say this, and again, we don't have the full clip, but maybe it's beginning to put this in context. So let's listen yes. to what she said here. That's when it was revealed to me that you are in survival versus those who have. And not so much about white. It is about white and black, but it's not, you know, it opened my eyes. Now, we don't hear yes. where the clip goes from there, but, but where do you think, Professor Peter, she, she's going with this? It's clear that this is an anecdote. This is, you know, in our soundbite culture, you hear us in the media always talking about context, context, context. Mm -hmm. It's clear she's using this as an anecdote to talk about how she's progressed from this moment and how we can't use race in all these issues and we can't let the weight of our historic, historical sort of issues with race shape our individual issues. So I think she's using this as an anecdote to work through her own issues, but also yeah. to show to the audience that we can move and beyond and transcend some of these circumstances. Now, of course, there's been a little bit of a fight brewing between the Tea Party and the NAACP, the, the NAACP sure. accusing the Tea Party of, of allowing racism in its ranks. You know, so here now the shoe is on the other foot, and the NAACP didn't say anything about this until it went public. So where do you come down on that? Sure, well, the... The shoe is not on the other foot here. I mean, with, talking about whether or not the Tea Party is racist is, is a totally different issue. I mean, this particular narrative or this anecdote within the framework of the NAACP uh, uh, conference does not in any way have any indication about NAACP's platform. And I think we need to sort of separate those two things. I understand that there's always want to, you know, we always want to do tit for tat, particularly yeah. in political discourse, but I don't think this is a good example to use that for.